हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द एनालिसिस ऑफ द हिंदू न्यूज़पेपर डेटेड फेबर ट्वेंटी एट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट टू इंपॉर्टेंट न्यूज पेपर आर्टिकल विच आर गोइंग टू बी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द सिविल सर्विस एग्जामिनेशन सो लेट स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट न्यूज पेपर आर्टिकल नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर न्यूज पेपर आर्टिकल टॉक्स अबाउट अ पर्टिकुलर विंग ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट दैट इज इन्फोर्समेंट डायरेक्टरेट एंड देर इज सम इशूज रिगार्डिंग द term of the chief of the enforcement directorate and that is why we are going to understand this particular newspaper article now this particular newspaper article becomes important for the gs paper 2 that is statutory regulatory and various quasi judicial bodies first let's understand the context of it and then we will deep dive into this particular matter and in fact we will also talk about the enforcement directorate in particular so now the supreme court reacted sharply on monday that it is not concerned with the politics regarding uh, the peace mill tenure extensions granted to the enforcement directorate so enforcement directorate director is being provided extensions right beyond 2 years of term as per the ordinance it passed in 2021 now this particular thing uh, is taking a political cause and the supreme court says that it is not concerned with the politics of it and it will analyze this particular case only because there is something that the supreme court had said in 2021 as well so the supreme court had on september 2021 had specifically said that there will be no further extensions for mr mishra that is the director that is sk mishra now the government within 2 months of this particular passing of judgment made amendments to the central vigilance act now the amendments in the central vigilance act uh, promulgated um, or it provided for the further extensions to the director of the enforcement directorate right in november 2021 this happened now the uh, now this particular case is going on in the supreme court and we'll hear more about it but for now let's understand what is this enforcement directory so enforcement directory or director of enforcement is a multi disciplinary organization mandated with the investigation of offenses of money laundering and violations of the foreign exchange laws they do two things investigation of offenses of money laundering and violations of the foreign exchange laws now it functions under the department of revenue of the ministry of finance and it is a premier financial investigation agency of the government if you are committing any kind of fraud then the ed is going to knock your doors this is the basic function of the enforcement directorate now the functions of the directorate under the statutory laws are various because it covers many of the statutory laws now the these laws are as such as or these acts are such that conservation of the foreign exchange and prevention of smuggling act 1974 also comes under the enforcement directorate fema that is foreign exchange management act of 1991 prevention of money laundering act of 2002 and fugitive offend economic offenders act of 2018 all of these statutory acts come under the enforcement directorate enforcement directorate is interested with providing uh, any kind of assistance regarding this particular statutory acts now the origin of this particular directorate or enforcement directorate goes back to the 1st may 1956 when an enforcement unit was formed under the department of economic affairs now this led to <clears throat> this led to handling exchange control laws violations under the foreign exchange regulations act of 1947 and at that particular point of time this particular enforcement unit was headquartered in delhi and was headed by the legal service officer as the director director of enforcement and it had two branches at calcutta bombay and calcutta the headquarters are at are at delhi and it had two branches that is at bombay and calcutta Now in 1957 the unit was named as enforcement directorate and another branch was opened at Madras now we have three branches in 1957 that is in Bombay Calcutta and Madras and we have headquarters in Delhi now in 1960 some of the changes come came about what were the changes so the administrative control of the directorate was transformed transferred from department of economic affairs to the department of revenue department of revenue comes under what it comes under the finance ministry right so now with the passage of time fera that is 1947 was repealed in uh, in order to counter all of the all of the uh, all of the 
all of the shortcomings it had and it was replaced by FERA 1973. Now the Enforcement Directorate now comes under the FERA Act of 1973. Now with the onset of the process of economic liberalization, it was realized that FERA is not enough and it was replaced by Foreign Exchange Management Act of 1999 which came into operation in 1st June 19, 2000 and now the Enforcement Directorate functioned under the Foreign Exchange Management Act. It implemented all of the uh, all of the provisions of the Foreign Exchange Management Act of 1999. So further in tune with the international anti-money laundering regime, laundering regime, the Prevention of Money Laundering Act of 2002 was enacted and Enforcement Directorate was interested with its enforcement with effect from 1st July 2000. Five. So now the Enforcement Directorate also looked at the PMLA that is Prevention of Money Laundering Act in addition to the FEMA that is Foreign Exchange Management Act. So <clears throat> this is the particular genesis of the Enforcement Directorate. This is how it came about. Now at this particular point of time it overlooks four statutory acts. Right. So um, we have talked about the genesis of the Enforcement Directorate. Let's now talk about the structure of the Enforcement Directorate. So the Enforcement Directorate has its headquarters at Delhi and is headed by the Director of Enforcement. And at this particular point of time, Mr. Mishra is the Director of Enforcement. Now it, this particular organization has five regional offices at Mumbai, Chennai, Chandigarh, Kolkata and Delhi. And these are headed by Special Directors of Enforcement. And it also has 10 zonal offices, each of which is headed by a deputy director. And it has, and it, and it has also 11 sub-zonal offices, each of which is headed by the assistant director. And if we talk about the tenure of these particular organ of uh, the members of this particular organization, then in November 2021, the president of India promulgated two ordinances. Now, these particular two ordinances changed the term of the or tenure of the directors of the CBI and Enforcement Directorate. So some changes were made in the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act of 1946 for the ED that is Enforcement Directorate and there were changes made in the Central Vigilance Commission Act of 2003 for the CV commissioners. Now they have been amendment, amended to give the government the power to keep two chiefs in their post for one year after they have completed their two year terms. So now the chiefs of the central agencies currently have a fixed tenure, fixed two year tenure and this particular tenure can be extended by every year for three annual extensions. Three annual extensions can be provided. That means that uh, um, a director of the enforcement directorate can serve for five years if three annual extensions are provided. So further, no extensions can be provided for uh, after the completion of a period of five years and in total including the period mentioned in the initial appointment. And this is the main contention that these particular extensions which have been provided. This is being analyzed uh, in this particular case which, have, which, we, which we have talked about, right? So now what about the ED's jurisdiction? Now the ED's juris jurisdiction is applies to whole of India both under the FEMA and PMLA. So the ED can take action against any person in which the, this particular act applies. And the and cases under the FEMA may lie in the civil courts. PMLA cases will lie in the criminal courts. Now the agency has jurisdiction of, uh, over a person or any other legal entity which commits a crime. And all the public servants come under the jurisdiction of the agency if they are involved in any offense related to the money laundering. Now, ED cannot take any action suo moto. One has to complain to any other agency or police first. And the ED will investigate the matter and will identify the accused. Right? So, this is the basic, basic function of the EDs or ED. It is the jurisdiction of the ED. Now, let's talk about the, some of the criticism which has been regarding the enforcement directorate, which the opposition has also talked about. So the first criticism is that being used for the ordinary crimes. Now according to the, according to some of the politicians and some of the stakeholders, they say that this is being used for ordinary crimes as well. So PMLA that is Prevention of Money Laundering Act 
is pulled into the investigation of even ordinary crimes and assets of genuine victims have been attached and currently the offenses in the schedule of the act are extremely overbroad and in several cases have absolutely no relation to either narcotics of or organized crime and in some of the cases people say that this particular PMLA is also pulled against the politicians of every kind even if they are innocent. Now the second thing is that is there is lot of lack of transparency and clarity. So the enforcement case information report which is basically a kind of first information report in the terms of the enforcement directed right. So now the ECIR is an equivalent of the FIR. Now it is considered as an internal document and not given to the accused. FIR is given to the accused but ECIR is not given to the accused. Now the ED treats itself as an exception to the principles and practices of the uh, of the criminal procedure law and chooses to register an ECIR on its whims and fancies of its own. This is the main accusation against them. Now there is also lack of clarity about ED selection of the cases to investigate. Nobody knows what kind of cases they are going to investigate and that is why some of the stakeholders say that enforcement directorate acts in the best interest of the government and in not in the best interest of the act which it serves that is FEMA or the PMLA right so in this particular light what are the reforms that can be brought to the ED so basically it is true that law has been given stringent power to the ED in dealing with the accused that can increase the possibility of the political misuse and political misuse has been registered in the past as well. We, do, we are not saying whether this particular case accrues to political misuse but we are saying that in general there is a political misuse by the subsequent governments. But there is, there must be consensus between the adjudicating authority and the officers of the ED to abide by the constitutionality of the provision under the PMLA making the investigation more lucid and the process itself should not become a punishment because ED's expanded power should be welcomed with greater commitment to expeditiously revolve Resolve the cases so both the judiciary and the enforcement agencies can move forward with the speedy trials and convictions. So the process should not become so much complicated that the process itself of punishment becomes very cumbersome. Now there must be constant scrutiny over the operations of the enforcement directorate and current disposition whether this clarification will improve the conviction rate we do not know. And if there will be any lacunas in the operative part change in the law of nature, these gaps can be filled either through suitable legislation, executive action or revised order of the apex, right? So this particular organization is very, very important. This particular agency is very important, enforcement directed, which comes under the Department of Revenue under the Ministry of Finance. Now, we in the past, we have also seen the questions which have been registered in the civil services examination regarding the enforcement directory. Now in 2021 there was a question which says said uh, something about the money laundering. If you talk about the money laundering then the prevention of money laundering act will come and the role of the enforcement directorate will also come. Now discuss this particular question says that discuss how emerging technologies and globalization contribute to money laundering and elaborate measures to tackle the problem of money laundering money laundering both at national and international level. And in the national level the PMLA comes under uh, PMLA laws comes under it and the, at the international level we have the FEMA that is Foreign Exchange Management Act. Now you need to understand, now you know why you need to understand the enforcement directorate and its rule, right? So this is it regarding this particular newspaper article. Let's now head to the next important newspaper article. Now this particular newspaper article talks about a particular scheme of the government regarding the defense that is Agnipath scheme. And there is something that is being said by the Delhi High Court. So these kinds of articles are important for the GS paper too. That is government policies and interventions for development in various sectors and issues arising out of their design and implementation. First, let's understand the context of it and then we will talk about the Agnipath scheme in nutshell. So now the Delhi High Court on Monday upheld the validity of the Agnipath scheme launched by the union government for the recruitment in the armed forces. So validity has been upheld in the High Court, in the Delhi High Court. Now it dismissed a bunch of petitions uh, 
uh, and it was said that it was introduced this particular scheme was introduced in the national interest and it maintained that from the per usual of the material on record the scheme was well thought out policy decision of the government it wasn't out of the blue it is it was very well thought after considering many of the factors now these particular petitions were about uh, to challenge or they challenged the constitutional validity of the scheme and it also talked about the recruitment for the armed forces under the certain previous advertisements which were not made now these particular petitions have been dismissed by the delhi high court let's now talk about what is exactly is this ugly particular agnipath scheme now agnipath scheme allows patriotic and motivated youth to serve in the armed forces for a period of 4 years earlier what happened you have to serve for the 15 years 17 years something like that minimum of 15 or 17 years now under this particular scheme the youth joining the army will be called agnivir scheme is agnipath and the people who join it will be called Agnivirs and the youth will be uh, able to be recruited into the army for a very short duration. This particular scheme was brought about mainly to reduce the age of the or average age of the uh, of the army personals and apart from it there were also some of the issues regarding the pensions and everything and that is why this particular scheme was brought about so under this new scheme around 45,000 to 50,000 soldiers will be recruited annually and most will leave the service in just four years and only 25 percent of these particular youth will remain after the four years and they will be recruited for the respective services for a period of 15 years and that can be extended if you get uh, any kind of promotions so this is it regarding this particular scheme this is this was a very short newspaper article but yet very significant right so this is it regarding this particular newspaper article and this is it for the day thank you from my side do like and share the video and subscribe to this channel have a good day bye